Shalom saints. Shalom saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom. How are you all doing today? I'm your host, Sister Dalila Dos Santos. I'm here to you to send once again to preach the word of the Lord to you so that deliverance can take place, so that salvation can take place, saints. Sister Beth, shalom. Welcome, King Clive, shalom. Brother Robertson, shalom. Sister Jew, shalom. Hi. Shalom, shalom as you all join in. Ah, boy, shalom. Sister Rose, shalom. Shalom, Queen. Shalom, ah, boy, alami, shalom. Roy and Myla, shalom, Paradigm Shift. Welcome back, Paradigm Shift. It's been a while. Shalom, shalom. Sister Rose, Beba and Sister Rose. Shalom, Sister Portia. Shalom, Pretty in Pink. It's been a while. How are you? Shalom, beloved Sister Janet. Yatera, shalom. Good success, shalom. Grant, shalom. D777, shalom. Brother Just King J, shalom. Brother Jaha as well. Maisie, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm good, sister, and I'm happy to see you. Feli Belly, shalom. Shalom, saints. Sister Pamela, shalom, sister. Sister Lori, shalom. Sister Shannon, shalom. Sandra Love, shalom. Le King, shalom. Shalom, Sister Lorian, a.k.a. My Sunshine. Sister Titi Ture, shalom, beloved sister. Sister Tia, shalom. Shalom, 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 saints of God. Today, it's going to be another powerful ministration. Destroying evil checkpoints. Oh, yes. You need to understand that life is spiritual, right? Although you are in the physical realm, your physical life, your very physical existence is affected by what happens in the spiritual. All right? And if you have any doubts, I have the word of God to prove it to you. When you pray and when you send your request to God or when you praise him, you do anything. Your prayer your praise has to break through the satanic evil checkpoints that the devil has put in place in the heavenlies so that the Lord can get your prayer. And sometimes your prayer will break through and destroy the evil checkpoints. But guess what? The devil will make sure that his evil immigration officers Demonic immigration officers intercept the angel that is bringing the answer to you. These are facts. These are not things that are just making up. No sense. When you have been fasting, you have been praying, you have been asking God for answers, God has heard you. Trust me. And he will delegate an angel to bring the answer. Okay, and the devil does not want you to have answers to your prayers. He does not want you to get answers to your prayers. He does not want you to receive in your hands the blessing. And if he cannot intercept your prayer, he will try to intercept the angel, delivering your blessing, delivering the message from God, the answer to your prayer. And I'm going to bring the scripture that proves this to you. And I'm here to encourage you, saints. We have just ended a fasting and some of you have yet, you are yet to receive an answer from God. And you've been asking God, Lord, I have prayed. Lord, I have sought your face. Lord, I have fasted, yet no answer to my prayer. So today, this is the answer to you. That is not that God has not answered your prayer. It's not that God hasn't got the desire to bless you. I'm going to explain to you that you have to, your prayer has to be strong enough to bulldoze through evil checkpoints, reach the presence of God, and that you 
are also to pray for the angel, for, for the angel that is bringing the answer, not to be intercepted. Okay? It is important. You pray, but you need to pray for your prayer not to be intercepted by Satan. And then you have to pray for the angel delivering the message also not to be intercepted. You have to stand in the gap in prayer for that. Your prayers are very much important. Okay? In that stage, after you've prayed, you have to pray that nothing will impede the angel of God from locating you. Nothing will intercept the angel of the, world, the Lord from locating you wherever you are in the world. That you will be located by the angel of God and you will receive the answer. And also you ought to pray for, this, for Satan not to be able to intercept your prayers. He has evil checkpoints, satanic checkpoints, demonic immigration officers. There are demons that have the, that they are delegated the task to intercept your prayers and stop your angels from locating you. And I am to going to give you another scripture that you can meditate as you pray for the angel of the Lord to locate you. There is a scripture that you ought to pray. And bring before God. All right. The devil is very cunning saints. He's been doing this for the longest. Okay. There, he, he has a system in place. To make sure you don't break through. To make sure you don't receive the answer to your prayer. But today through this scripture that I'm going to release to you today. And another scripture. You are going to receive the prayer. No more delay in Jesus' name. Your angel that brings your breakthrough will locate you wherever you are without any hindrance in Jesus' name. Okay? So saints, get your Bibles ready. Pen and a paper as well. The first scripture is quite lengthy, so be ready. The second one is very short. But the first one will require your special attention. Okay? Your focus. Now, to remind you that we are only fasting from the 15th of this month to the 30th. Okay? And the fasting will end with uh, Holy Communion. Okay? Secondly, um, Fridays um, are days for consecration of anointing oil and olive oil. But you can bring anything you want to consecrate to God. It is not limited to anointing oil and olive oil, okay? Thirdly, beware of fraudulent people impersonating me, trying everything to mimic me, sending requests, asking for money. I will never ask you for money. I will never request for anything. You have received a follow and it is not this page. Report and block is as simple as that. Um, if you want to send your testimony or you want me to pray for you or whatever it is, contact me. All right, I'll try my best to respond. I am yet to respond to some people, but um, I haven't been feeling well. But I'm here, saints, not to panic. I'm, I'm managing. Okay, but keep me in prayers, please. So let us consecrate this live stream unto God's saints so that the Lord will speak to us. Everlasting Father, O King of glory, we welcome you today, Lord. We adore you and we revere you, Lord God, and we magnify your holy and precious name. Abba Father, thank you for waking us up this morning in perfect health and strength. Father, Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because all our family members are alive and well, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us, Father, Lord, even during times of great trials and tribulations and many tests. Thank you for keeping our sanity in place. Thank you for providing, Lord God, food on our tables. Father, Lord, thank you for for the clothing on our backs, Lord God, a roof over our heads. 
Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for keeping us on the narrow path. Even when times are hard, Lord, you have not abandoned us. You have kept us, Lord. And we know that we are not here by coincidences because you declared life. You breathed, you, you, you were breathing this morning, your hoak, your life into our lungs, your spirit into us. So we don't take, Father Lord, the gift of life for granted. Neither we take the gift of salvation for granted. We know that if we are here, there was war in heaven to keep us alive. Lord, you fought for us. And you kept us, Lord. How wonderful are the works of your hands. How marvelous are you and merciful. How wonderful is your love for us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. You are faithful. You are just. You are righteous, O oh Lord. And we thank you for sending your beloved son, your only begotten son, to die for us on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we plead for mercy, forgiveness from all our sins that we have committed against you and those made in your image up to 50 generations before us. Forgive us for all our transgressions, iniquities, evil thoughts, wicked ways, Lord God. We ask you for forgiveness. We ask you that the blood of Jesus will blot out all our transgressions. And as we repent, Lord, we don't want to go back to our sinful ways, Lord God. So we ask you for strength and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to keep ourselves on the narrow path and not divert from the Lord from the path of righteousness and salvation. Abba Father, King of glory, O ancient of days, in the mighty name of Jesus, I consecrate this live stream into your holy and precious hands. Father, Lord, use this live stream to speak to all of us here today, to strengthen us in our walk with you, to uplift us, Father, Lord, because some of us, we are weak, Father, Lord, and we are slowly losing focus and strength. Lord, use this platform to uplift us. Lose this, use this platform to encourage us today in the mighty name of Jesus. I also rededicate the lives of each one of us on this live stream into your holy and precious hands. I'm asking you, Lord, take possession of our lives. Take possession of every fiber of our being, of who we are, Lord God. Be in charge. Have all dominion. Have all control and all authority over our lives. And Almighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you that you will bind all principalities and rulers of darkness and wicked and demonic spirits. Seeking to steal, kill, destroy, destabilize this live stream, cause confusion, diversion from the message, distraction, strife and offense and whatever it is. Father Lord, bind all these principalities and rulers of darkness with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire and cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever, never to have any power control, dominion, authority against us, your children, almighty God. Father God, I'm asking you also that in the name of Jesus, you will deliver all of us here and our family members, our children, including from every form of retaliation from the kingdom of darkness. If there are any agents of darkness in this live stream, sending arrows, sending curses and evil incantation against us. Father Lord, let the Holy Ghost fire locate them. Let the Holy Ghost fire burn them to ashes and render them all powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every demonic and satanic arrow fashioned against us to return to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, use me as a vessel of honor, Lord God. Father, Lord, to speak to your children so that salvation can take place. Deliverance can take place. Knowledge of you, Father, Lord, can take place. Yokes can be broken, Lord God, in the mighty name of our sovereign Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, be in charge. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and agree. Amen. Amen and amen. Saints, please go to your Bibles, book of Daniel, chapter 10. Please 
locate book of Daniel chapter 10 saints. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. And I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, I was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking. And as I was listen, as I, I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up. For I have now been sent to you and when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief prince, princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you that what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I have overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed, he said, peace, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, do you know that I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Saints of God. The Bible here in the book of Daniel chapter 10 is telling you and me that there is a spiritual battle going on in the heavenly realms. When we do fast and pray, we are connecting to God on a spiritual level. When you are fasting and crucifying the flesh and you are coming before the Lord, seeking for answers, we can see here that Daniel was seeking for answers concerning his people. There were things disturbing Daniel. There were things troubling him. And he decided as a believer, I'm going to take it up to God in prayer, in fasting and supplication. 
And we can clearly here see that Daniel was a diligent servant like some of you that are watching me today. We had several corporate fastings and you were fasting. And your prayer was, God, give me discernment. God, show me the things about my destiny. Show me what it is that is paralyzing me. Show me what is going on with my life. I need to know what are the mysteries about my life, about my assignment, my destiny, about my children, about my parents. Lord, I need divine revelation. And you fasted and you prayed and you crucified your flesh just like Daniel. And the Bible tells us in verse 4, that on the 24th day of the first month, you can see that Daniel was fasting. And on the 24th day of the first month, as he was standing by the river bank, people go there to relax. I believe that Daniel had fasted and he no answer to his prayer. And he decided to go and relax himself by the river bank. Or perhaps meditate and consider what, what is going on, God. What have I done wrong? I've prayed. I've fasted. I sought your face. I'm not in any scene. I'm, I'm trying my best to do what is right. And instantly, Daniel had a vision. So you that are praying and asking God for answers, and you have not, you are yet to receive an answer. Today, you are getting divine revelation from God. Just like how Daniel had a vision. Today, it's like light has come to your spiritual being. And you are understanding what is going on. You are being visited by the spirit of the living God now. Just like how Daniel got divine revelation. And we can see here that he saw an angel. And the angel was giving him a message. And the angel was majestic. This angel was armed with flame, flaming torches. His arms and legs were like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of multitude. But guess what? You see the depiction of the angel saints. Can you imagine the people who were with Daniel run away? They, they did not see the vision, but they, in the spirit, they could see that, hey, something spiritual is taking place by this river bank. And they went and hid. But yet, that same angel was intercepted by a principality called the Prince of Persia. And the Bible tells us yet that the angel was there, detained by this principality for three days. An angel of God detained by a principality. You that think that you fasted one month, hey, let me relax. Oh, yes, I've prayed and so what? I'm waiting for an answer. I'm not praying anymore. If Daniel, a diligent servant of the Most High God, that had the, 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 the mantle for prayer that even angels came to deliver the answer. He, his angel was intercepted. What about you and me? Come on now, saints. Because some of, here at, of us here, we are joking with spiritual warfare. We are joking with prayer. We think that, we, it, listen, there has no implications in the spirit. You, you are just living your life like, hey, I'm going to give up. I, I, I'm gonna not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna pray anymore. I'm tired of this. It's too much. If the angel of the Lord, look at the depiction of the angel, flaming, flaming, flaming swords, hmm? flaming torches. Sorry, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. Look. And his voice, like the sound of a multitude, yet was intercepted by the prince of Persia. Detained. And when he was detained, because there is divine order in heaven, there are ranks because there is an army. His supervisor, the archangel Michael said, where is so and so? Oh, he's going to deliver a message to Daniel, but he has not yet returned. He should have returned yesterday. Where is he? It should have returned three days ago. What's going on? Then they put the intelligence, the military intelligence, because they have gadgets up there. 
and they see that, oh, he's been intercepted. He needs help. And the help that he needed, only Archangel Michael could do it. Only Archangel Michael could deal with that principality. Some of you here that have not got an answer to your prayers. You don't understand that the principality that is holding your prayer is a principality. The only and a high angel can, can come and go and deal with that principality. Yet you are sleeping with your bonnet at night. Yet you are quitting. You've prayed, you fasted. For, for 30 days and hey, I'm tired. I'm going to give up. Carry on. If angels can be intercepted, arrested for three days, you think that you can relax. Carry on. And let me tell you something. When they began to see that, look, one of us is not here because in heaven there is order. They know who is absent, who has gone to Sister Dalila's house for that shift that night to watch over that house. They know who has not returned and they have to find out why. And they found out that, hey, one of us is intercepted. They needed to know where. So the, 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 the Archangel Michael had to go there and fight to release for that, for the principality to release that angel that had the answer. The response for Daniel. And guess what? When the angel was released, he was not released to, 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 to respond to Daniel. No, he was released back to heaven. Because it was not conducive for him to go down to Daniel to deliver the answer. It was too dangerous. They had to go up and receive instructions. What it is that we're going to do next. Can you imagine the spiritual warfare that is going on for your life? For you to be alive. For you to even receive answer to anything. Do you see our, our lives? Hmm? And the way Daniel was tired. He was exhausted because imagine all that time fasting, praying, seeking the face of God. He had no strength left. And now he had that vision that he took the spirit or his spiritual strength as well. The angel of the Lord had to touch him and give him strength again because he was weak. Weak of what? Of fasting, of praying, of seeking for the face of God. And the angel not only encouraged Daniel, but he had to physically strengthen, supernaturally strengthen Daniel because Daniel was down. And guess what? In the end, this same angel that was intercepted said something very interesting. Let us go to verse 20. The angel said, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. Meaning that that angel was commissioned to fight constantly that principality because of Daniel. Because of Daniel's mantle of, of assignment in intercession. He was an intercessor for the Israelites. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first, I will tell you what is written in the book. Guess what? The angel already knew that he was going to have to fight again the principality, this prince of Persia, and that after the prince of Persia will get reinforcement from the prince of, of, of Greece to fight him. So the angel knew that, that, can you see the warfare that was going on in the heavenlies because of Daniel? The angel told him here. And the angel told him further, no one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Archangel Michael was the only one that could support that angel, that could battle those principalities. It was him and, and only Archangel Michael, meaning that there were other angels from the armies of God, but it had to be Archangel Michael and that particular angel that was the messenger for Daniel. The, the only they had the power, the anointing, and the strength to destroy these two principalities, the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece. That is why, why we are gathered here today. 
You're going to destroy the evil checkpoints. You're going to pray for God to send reinforcement from heaven. Suppose the angel that was supposed to deliver the message to you back the 30, 30 of October has been intercepted and is somewhere. You're not praying. So you will be released back to heaven because these people are going to come for him to bail him out. All right. But then because you relent on your prayers, the angel ain't coming back for you, darling. Ain't coming back. He's staying there with his answer. You're not praying. You are not like Daniel. You are not seeking the face of the Lord to find out why has the response no, not come yet. You see what happens to Christians that are always quitting and give up. For us, giving up is not an option because even angels are not giving up. They are trying their best to deliver the message, but they are being intercepted. Then we have to pray. Lord, what is going on up there? You don't know. You ask God. Is there any principality, any ruler of darkness that is holding back my prayer? That is holding back the angel, the, the angel that was supposed to deliver? What is going on, God? And you pray. And I'm going to give you the scripture for these prayer points. You've got to understand that we are under heavy spiritual warfare when we declare ourselves believers. The minute you confess to be a believer and you begin to profess the name of Jesus, you begin to be a witness for him. You begin to testify of his goodness and his mercy in the land of the living. You begin to pray. You begin to fast and seek the face of the Lord. Instantly, you are enrolled in a spiritual battle whether you like it or not. And giving up is not an option. Giving up could mean some of you being unalive, taken from the land of the living because you gave up. God has not given us the spirit of fear or cowardness, but he has given us the spirit of boldness. You are then cursing God. Oh, I, am, I pray nothing happens. I pray no answer. You don't know that God up there is strategizing. Angels are regrouping, rearming re-strategizing for you, thinking of new, new, where can, can they send an angel that cannot be intercepted, intercepted? How can the angel locate you? And you are there saying all manner of, of things against God. And you don't understand that this life is spiritual. There is a great battle in the heaven. And you, you can see that if you go to the book of Revelation, it tells you that there are constant battles in heaven. John the Revelator had the revelation of the constant battles up there in the heavenlies. You have to understand that the devil was at once with Archangel Michael. He knows the, all of them. They were all, all together once. They were all part of the same army. So he knows. How they operate is he knows because he was once one of them. And you think that you can give up because God has not answered you this month, has not answered you the next month. And you don't understand that some of you here, you've been living for the devil for 30, 40 years. You just became born again. It takes time to undo all the evil that you did in 40, 50 years. Your involvement in your cult, your involvement in the things of the world. It, 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 you are entangled in such a way that the battle up there is not an easy task. You want God to undo what you did all your life, all your commitments with the devil in one day. It does not work like that. You have covered some of you still have covenants. Some of you are still attached to things because you don't understand that that little sin that you do, that your little P-O-R-N that you do on the side, but then you pray midnight. You don't understand that that is holding you back. That is strengthening the principality, the prince of, prince of Persia or whatever, to continue to keep you oppressed that you don't get the answers for prayer. If Daniel, that was, Daniel was a righteous man, and because he was a righteous man, heaven sent reinforcement. Archangel Michael turn up to clear to, to finish them off. But some of you here, you got to question yourselves. You're not serious in this. You are not serious in this army of the Lord. You are not serious. I'm sorry. If you want to be offended, so be it. You are the one that God has told you that look, you cannot watch P-O-R-N anymore. 
delete those things come to the narrow path be in the spirit of prayer you do well one month two months on the third month you're relapsing again then when your answer does not come when you don't when you are struggling you want to blame god don't you understand that when you are watching these PORNs, you are establishing covenants with demons. You are strengthening them. You are giving them power to continue to oppress you. Some of you that are not too serious, going back to the clubs, you don't understand that you are empowering the demons of fornication, of immorality. You are empowering them. Some of you abusing substances, abusing alcohol, and you don't know that you are strengthening the devil anymore. And you want God to cooperate with you in that manner. Some of you, you've been involved in your cult for 20, 30 years. You establish a lot of covenants. Instead of you being honest with God and saying, Lord, I want to break each one of the covenants. And I, I want you to give me wisdom for me to be able to break covenant with these demons. You are just asking God, God, do this, do this. But you are not preoccupied in making right with God, breaking covenant with Satan so that he will not have a foothold against you. All you are busy in asking for job, for employment, for husband, for wife, for finances. But you are not dealing with the covenants that you established through the course of your life, through your fornication, through your adultery, through your immorality through your P-O-R-N, through whatever it is that you are doing. Come on now. Some of you that are complaining that you are in poverty, I'm sorry to say, for 20, 30, 40 years of your life, you are empowering demonic altars. I said it. All your life, you took your money to serve the devil. Your money is in different altars, the altar of fornication, because some of you went out with even certain people prostitutes and whatnots and now you are complaining about your poverty but you've been serving the devil with your money for 40 years now god is giving you a standard you don't want to keep the standard you want to do your things your way it does not work like that because if even the righteous are struggling to get answers what about you that is limping some of you you limping Towards the, the, the king of glory. Baggage. Hmm? Filth. You are not walking in righteousness. You are limping. Next day you are in crutches. The other day somebody has to carry you. Towards God. So. Your involvement in the kingdom of darkness and the things of Satan has been a long time. So it's going to take some time to break some things. It's going to take some time to destroy certain covenants. You want God to, 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 to do it in one day. When you, you yourself not interested in, you're only interested in, in breaking free, breakthrough. But you are not interested in God dealing with your condition. It takes time. Do you know how long it takes for a witch to be delivered? Ever been in a deliverance service of a witch or a former warlock? Text, sometimes the deliverance can take three years, four years because of the kind of covenant they had with the devil. Okay? So it's not a process that is from, because you are so involved in the kingdom of that, you were immersed. So God has to work with you and, and, and break it. One day he's breaking this thing, tomorrow he's breaking another. And you want God to do it in one day. And, and, and break it. One day he's breaking this thing, tomorrow he's breaking another. And you want God to do it in one day. Your involvement in your cult has been for a long time. Fornication, lying, cheating, stealing. You are establishing covenants with the kingdom of darkness, with principalities, with rulers of darkness. You came to Christ now, but some of you have not broken some of the agreements. Okay? When God is telling you through a preacher, do this, do this, you, 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 you are fighting them. Oh, these people, it's the, it's, they're going too far. 
God is telling you what, what it takes for you to be free. You don't cooperate. How is it going to happen? You don't want to cooperate with it. You want to do things your way. But you don't understand that in the spirit there are rankings in the demonic realm. There are demons in charge of your area, of your territory, of your region, of your country. That are rulers of darkness. That their job is to establish satanic checkpoints so that your prayer will not go to heaven or your angel is intercepted. I'm not here preaching from my book. I don't have a book. I'm preaching from the word of God. And moreover, the angel that was in charge to deliver the message to Daniel went further and said, look, I know that when I leave, he knew that when he leaves Daniel after delivering the message to Daniel, that he's going to be intercepted again. And he's going to have to fight again with not only just the prince of Persia, but the prince of Greece. And only the archangel Michael was going to be able to help him. No other angel was going to be able to do it. You see how much hatred Satan had for Daniel, the man of God. It's the same hatred he has for you. Praying for your family to come to Christ. Praying to break the cycle of poverty. Praying for God to answer you concerning your children. And you don't understand that Satan hates you. And he's doing the most to make sure you don't get the answer to your prayer. So therefore, you fasted. A month and two months, no answer. You are there saying all manner of stuff because you don't know the word of God. You don't meditate and you don't care to study. That's why you are saying things that don't make sense. We are dealing with principalities here. Princes, high ranking demons, you know, that only the Archangel Michael can fight against them and win. Now. You that were involved in, you, you just came to Christ. You think that you're going to win this battle in one, two days. Even Daniel was a godly man. He, he, he was in great suffering, in great supplication, and he was not a sinner. He never, he was never involved in your cult. He was a diligent young man from day one. Righteous man. But he had a, his spiritual warfare. He was in it. So what makes you different? If Daniel that was a righteous man was going through much, can you imagine a man that had fasted to the point that he lost all his strength? He had no more strength left. Then he's having all these visions. Hmm? Some of you perhaps don't understand. Look at the description of the angel that went and visited Dan. You need to read it again. Torches of fire. Voice like multitude. Yet was intercepted. And you think. That, hey, my life is just going to be easy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No saints. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to pray. The angels are doing what they are doing, but what about you? You have to pray. For, 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 for heaven to react to Daniel and send an angel is because Daniel's prayer succeed, succeed successfully um, was answered by God. And the Lord assigned an angel. So what about you? You think that this battle is just going to be peanuts. So easy. No. <coughs> it depends on what it is that you are fighting. And for how long. Some of you, your own family. Are not interceding. They are not praying. <coughs> Excuse me, saints. So you have to understand that you are engaged in battle, in warfare. You are engaged in, in, in such a warfare in the heavenlies that you cannot continue to be like that. Living just anyhow. Praying when you want to feel like. So the angels should be working extra hours for you when you are sitting down watching something on the television while the angels are working hard. Does that make sense? Thank you, darling. Hmm? Excuse me, saints. So the angels are there doing the most 
working extra hard for you, but you now on your couch watching television. All you do is complain from morning to night while the angels are there being intercepted because of you and you are there sitting down. You tell me where in the world you can go to a place of establishment of work or whatever you at your job and you don't do your work and you sit down, you get paid at the end of the month. Your colleagues will complain. Your co-workers will say that this person here is a lazy person, wants to live off us, does not want to do his or her job, and they will complain to the supervisor. Same thing, that angel that has been entrusted to give you the answer to your prayer is going to report back to heaven. So and so is lazy, is always watching television, is always watching nasty programs, music that is filthy. I don't have an environment that is conducive for me to go and deliver the message. There are so many demons in his house. Some of you, your house is the demon of P-O-R-N sitting on top of your house, sitting on top of your destiny, sitting on top. Of, how is the angel going to come and locate you like that? You will go back. You're not serious. Hmm? Your child has done something. You're calling him names, calling that child names. You're getting violent with your family, anger. They don't even know what they've done to you. You come back from work and you are now turn, turn a demon in the, into your house. The, the angel will come and, and immediately the demon of anger is on top of your roof. What is he going to do? Deliver the message to you? Really? All he's going to do is call up... Call, 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 look, I need to go back. The environment is not conducive for me to enter that house. I cannot enter into that house. That house is too filthy. Has a lot of demons. There's a lot of things in, the, in it. Then, then God will not, it's not because God did not answer you. Your life, how you decided to live your life. It's, it's, it's totally against God's order. So that's why you have not received the answer to your prayer. So who are you going to blame? Can't blame God. Because the angel here is saying, Daniel, you are a faithful servant. Look how he salutes Daniel. He said, you are a man of valor. You are a righteous man. Doesn't the angel salute him like that? Hmm? Is the angel in charge of your message gonna salute you how? Look at this lazy, immoral, filthy. You will go back. The angel here said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you. Highly esteemed. By who? By God. Are you highly esteemed by God? That God should go and get his finest archangel Michael to come fight your battle for you. Are you highly esteemed? Ask yourself that question. Oh, but sister Dalila, we are not worthy. We are all sinners. Yes, including me. But at least I'm trying not to be a sinner. You are jumping from fire to fire. From sin to more sin. At least me, I'm trying. And some other saints here, we are trying. Oh, we are trying. Every day. When we look at our phones and we see that this is not good, we turn our face. When we go outside, somebody is irritating us. We don't curse them. We, we zip it up. When somebody comes to say, hey, illegal business, do you want to do it for cash? We don't do it. When somebody is saying, oh, let's do this, let's do that. We say, look, I'm a new creation in Christ now. I am not engaged in such activities. I used to, but I've accepted Christ and I urge you to do the same so that you can go to heaven. Even, the, even when you live like that, those of you ungodly fr friends will just leave you and cross you off the list. They know, oh, so-and-so is a fanatic for Christ now. He's a believer. They will not to phone you anymore. So I want you to think about this. If Daniel, that was highly esteemed by God, was involved in so much warfare, his prayer 
was such a threat to the kingdom of darkness that the devil sent principalities, the prince of Persia, and also the prince of Greece to intercept the angel in charge of the answer. You've got to understand that the same devil operates in the same manner. He has not changed. His tactics are the same. His modus operandi is the same. Those principalities are very much in the same place where they were back in Daniel's days. It's just that the Bible recorded it for your own to strengthen you in your times of weakness. When you think you want to give up. When you think that God is not listening to prayer. God has given us this scripture as encouragement. So that we will know that, look, now is the time to even pray harder. Now is the time to even go harder in prayer, in fasting, in supplication, in asking others to stand in the gap. It's not time to quit and give up because even Daniel did not give up. And he had not received the answer, but he was hopeful. He was there asking God for answers and he did get his answer in the end. Now, saints... The scripture for our prayer points today is in the book of Romans, chapter 9, 33. This will be the basis for our warfare today, destroying evil checkpoints. Romans 9, 33, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Who is that stone that was laid in Zion that causes people to stumble? Jesus. Jesus will make all your enemies to stumble, even the invisible enemies, the principalities that are fighting your prayer life, fighting your angels not to locate you and give you the answer to your prayer. He is a rock that makes them fail. They will, they will fall. Because Jesus is a rock that will make them fall. Come on now. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. Regardless of your situation. What you prayed for God to give you an answer. What you ask God to do. I'm here to encourage you as a believer. From one believer to another believer. He will never. You will never be put to shame. Because of the stone that was laid in Zion that causes people to stumble. And the rock who is Jesus that makes them fall. You will not be put to shame. It's an assurance from God. You are guaranteed by God that you will not be put to shame. Threaten with eviction. You will not be put to shame. Threaten with losing your job. You will not be put to shame. Threatened with divorce papers, you will not be put to shame. Threatened with repossession, you will not be put to shame. Bad report from the doctor, you will not be put to shame. It's an assurance from God. Somebody says, I don't know what to do. What about trusting God? You don't have to know what to do. Leave it to God. He knows better than you and better than me. The minute you begin to trust God, you will never be intimidated by no man. You will never be afraid of any situation or whatever it is. You will have peace that surpasses all understanding. Because why? One who believes in God and is believes that he can never be put to shame. It's a person that is already accomplished a lot. You are already in the blessing and you don't understand it. Because blessed are those who are going to believe without seeing him. We don't need evidence. All we need is the word of God. Scientists need evidence. We don't. Atheists want evidence. We don't need evidence. All we need is the word of God and we believe. We stand in agreement. We are a peculiar people. The Bible says that the righteous people, the book of Habakkuk, are the only ones that live by faith and not by sight. We are the only ones in the world that believe. Even when we are dying, we still believe. And that is how we enter into heaven. Even, even if you find a Christian that is dying in a hospital bed, they still say, I still believe God has the power to heal me. 
I still believe God will make me live again. And guess what? When they died, they really translated onto glory land. I remember a pastor that said that he, a young lady, very, very beautiful young lady, at the end of the service went to ask him for prayer. And the young lady said to him that she was dying with cancer and that she was asking him for prayer, right? And the pastor said this, beloved sister, I will stand in prayer and in agreement for your healing. And if God heals you, sister, glory be to God. He is awesome and powerful. But if he doesn't heal you, glory be to God. You're going to be in heaven. What better place to be? Whether alive or not, you are gaining, sister. You in Christ, you are gaining. You are going to be promoted to a glorified body. That is the kind of faith that we need to have. That is the kind of faith that Jesus wants to see in us. Yes, we believe. Can he do it? Absolutely. He can do all things. But this life here, start to stop focusing on this life here. This life here is, is going to end one day. And then what? This life will going to end with all the bills to pay, with all the sorrow and disappointments. And then you will rise in Christ to begin to live life. Free of bills. Free of disappointment. Free of people's expectations. In all things, let us glorify God and don't give up. Don't give up. Even when God comes and hasn't found anything, let him at least find faith in you. At least faith. If we don't have faith, saints, it takes faith even to enter into the kingdom of God. How are you going to have faith that you are, God is going to open the doors of heaven to you if here you don't have faith? Somebody says it's the children. The children don't belong to us. They belong to Christ. He gave it to us. And he, he will know what to do with them. I am here to say, saints, you owe nothing. Stop saying, my kids. My job, you have nothing. You only have Jesus. Stop making your life, uh, stop building your identity in things. My car, my house, my kids, you are nothing. And, and you, you know when you will realize that? Go to a funeral. Go to a funeral. You don't have to listen to me. It's when you go to a funeral that you realize that, hey, you own nothing. You are nothing. You are a nobody. The only thing that you have is Jesus. The car is not yours, belongs to God. He gave it to you. The job is not yours. It's not your big brain that got you that job. God did it. Your house, God, did, God gave it to you. And what did Job say? Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. And I'm here to say that all that we have is borrowed. Yes, sister, it is true. Somebody says you don't understand because you're not in my position. Let me tell you something. Whether I'm in your position or not, concentrate and focus on your salvation because at least if this life ends, right? You are going to go to the presence of God if you are in the right standing with God. I could be here and tomorrow God decides that, hey, Dalila, it is finished. Time to go home. How many people just have us just go like that? They were not sick. They were okay. And they just went. But it all goes down to one thing. One thing only. Where are you going to spend eternity? Where? Where? Prioritize Jesus. He's your best friend. 
He's the only one who walks with you when everybody abandons you. He's the only one who cares. He's the only one who cares. He's the only one who died for you. Your car did not die for you. Your job did not die for you. Your wife, your husband did not die for you, neither your children. One day you're going to have to stand before the living God to give an account. Some people think that, oh, because she's preaching, her life is easy. No, saints. If you are with Christ, there is always something you're going through. Okay? The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Bible doesn't say that, oh, righteous only, righteous so and so. and No, all the righteous. You are a righteous, many are your afflictions. Many are your, are your afflictions because that's what Jesus said. I'm not saying it. The Bible doesn't say, oh, only those people from Africa, the, those righteous from Africa are the ones who are going to go through affliction. Only those ones from Asia uh, and the ones from, from the Americas and South America and, 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 and Middle East. No, it says all the righteous, meaning that wherever you are, many will be your afflictions. But guess what? You are not of your affliction. It is something. It, this too shall pass. God will get you out of that affliction. He will bail you out. He will get you out. So he, he conquered the world. You have the same anointing in you to conquer the world as well. If God heals, hallelujah, we glorify him. What a wonderful testimony. But if he doesn't, we will celebrate that you've gone into, into the king, kingdom of God. We will say, hey, beloved sister, beloved brother, they fought, but hey, they went to, they've got, they were translate. They are now in the presence of God. They are now with angels, Father Abraham. They are now with all the saints of old. They defeated death. There you go. But some of you here, you are concerned because you don't know whether you're going to enter or not. We, some of you here, when somebody comes and say, oh, so and so has passed. We will be trying to figure out, did they make it or not? Because he, that smoking and that drinking and fornication. He, <laughs> I hope they had the time to repent at the last minute. Don't, don't we say that to some, some of our saints, brothers and sisters, including family members? They say some of them rest in peace, but they are not resting in pieces. We all know they are resting in pieces. Because they had not, they, they, they didn't take their walk with Christ seriously. If God is giving you the breath of life today, take it as, a, 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 as an opportunity to live for God. It will count on the day of judgment. You say, Lord, that life that you gave me, whether long or, or short, I, 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 I lived for you. I ate for you. I walked for you. I worked for you. I did everything for you. Then God will reward you. Some of us are waiting to be rewarded by men. That is not the assignment. Who is busy handing over rewards and crowns? It's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's no man. If you want man to reward you, you will wait there until you die of a broken heart. Because most of the people that we do good things to, they, they pay us with evil. They are the same ones who will begin to work against us. Anytime you decide to help a person, know that that is a potential enemy that you just helped. Just have that at the back of your mind. Lord, this one could be the same one turning Judas against me. But hey, Lord, I'm doing what you have asked me. So therefore, Lord, my reward comes from you. There you go and you move on. Then you move on and you will never have any expectations because you know that your Redeemer lives and you know who is the one that. Is in charge. Is your God. Is the one who's gonna help you, not not the hand of man. So saints, let us pray for God to destroy all those all evil checkpoints working against us. Okay, we have to break through. We cannot end this year in sorrow and in pain and in languish like we did last year. No, we're gonna war. 
Yes, if they are detaining our angels, they are going to have to release them in the mighty name of Jesus. God is going to send reinforcement from heaven to release them in the mighty name of Jesus. I was watching a testimony of a, a former agent of darkness, a Satanist that gave her life to Christ. And she said, the reason why they are able to go to churches and do everything, paralyze, pray and everything, is because Christians are very worldly. It's easy to go to certain ch churches because they are preoccupied more with status, money, and how society sees them and jobs and opportunities that they are preoccupied with holiness, righteousness, prayer, intercession. That's what she said. That's why it was easy for her to do what she was doing in churches. Her assignment was to destroy churches, to scatter the brethren. Yes, he says Christians are not doing what God has commissioned them to do. God has given them a mantle of prayer. They are not praying. God has given them to intercede. They are not inter intercessors. God has called them unto righteousness. They are not walking in righteousness. The, the, age, the, the, the former Satanist was saying it. She said, unfortunately, many Christians are hypocrites. They do not practice what they preach. And she also said that the reason why majority, that it was easy for them to attack the finances of Christians is because they don't hide and they don't offer. Especially, she said something, especially the pastors. She said, she said, sometimes it's the pastor that we attack with the spirit of poverty because pastors think that because they are pastors, they don't have to tithe and they don't have to give offer and they don't have to do charity. And that is how she attacked the churches, the finances of the church. Because the pastor himself is not practicing what he's preaching. He's busy collecting the tidings and offerings of everybody in that ministry. But he himself is not a faithful tither and is not a faithful giver. If you are complaining of poverty, begin to tithe. Give your offering to God. Don't rob from God. The agents of darkness will intercept your prayer for finances because why you are lacking. You've been weighed in the scale and found wanting. Some of you, your family member is calling you. Charity as well. You don't practice charity. Your family member is calling you. They are sick and they need, they send you the snapshot of the prescription they need. You have the money to help them um, with that prescription and you don't help them. And you keep the money in your account and you could have bought that medication for a, that sick person. Some of you, your elderly parents, you do not render them financial help. God is not going to hear your prayer. You will be poor forever. I'm sorry. When the man of God comes to tell you that live in righteousness because you are open doors for spiritual spouses, for demons, you don't want to listen. You go back to that, your boyfriend. You go back to that, your, your girlfriend. Somebody says I need financial help. Yes, but we don't know you here. You could be a fraudulent person. If you are a member of this ministry and I know you and you contact me, I will help. No problem. But there are people nowadays copying my page to ask people for money. How do I know you are genuine? I know everybody who comes to this live stream. If any of you that I know, right? Speak to me and I have a relationship with you. No problem. And I, I can see when there is the spirit of deceit in people. First you are dying. Now you want help. I'm not an idiot. Just because I'm a Christian does not mean that I'm, I'm lacking sense. All right. So saints... Let us concentrate in prayer because the devil, when time comes for prayer, he does not want us to pray. He will br bring all sorts of things for us to distract from the main point, which is to pray against evil checkpoints. 
Let us pray, saints. Abba, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence today, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, Almighty God. We thank you that you can never fail. Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful message today concerning the evil checkpoints that Satan puts in place to stop our prayers from going into heaven, to stop our angels from locating us. Father, Lord, we repent. From the times we could have been praying and seeking your face and seeking your presence, and we shifted our focus, Father, Lord, to give up and stop praying and stop seeking your face, stop meditating on the word, and we allow the enemy to win the battle. Forgive us, Almighty God. We repent in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, let every battle in the heavenlies be won in favor of our angels and the angels that are to deliver our blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Let every satanic law programmed into our lives be terminated in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every evil ancestral law programmed into our genes be terminated by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Let the prayers release angelic intervention to favor us in Jesus' mighty name. We receive the anointing to disgrace satanic arrows in Jesus' mighty name. We cut off every supply of food to our problems in Jesus' mighty name. Let thunder from the Lord destroy every evil altar constructed against us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, release us from known and unknown curses in Jesus' mighty name. We rebuke every power working against the soundness of our minds in Jesus' mighty name. We seal the rebuke with the blood of Jesus. Let every untamed enemy be tamed by the Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' mighty name. We break every evil padlock put upon our businesses in Jesus' mighty name. Let the blood of Jesus rub off evil creams and ointments put upon our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Let every witchcraft meeting summoned for our sake be scattered unto desolation in Jesus' mighty name. Let every chain of satanic accusation be shattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every resistance to our breakthrough scramble in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we will become all that God has created us to be in Jesus' mighty name. Every good area in our lives that the enemy has denied expression receive resurrection power in Jesus' mighty name. Let every paralyzed potential receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every dead talent receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every battered emotion receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every fainting spirit receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every lifeless business receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every dead spiritual life receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every slumbering spirit receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every buried virtue receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let every slow progress receive resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. Let all amputated blessings receive resurrection in Jesus mighty name. Let all dead organs receive resurrection in Jesus mighty name. Let all dead certificates receive resurrection in Jesus mighty name. Let every dead prayer altar receive resurrection in Jesus mighty name. Let all dead marriages receive resurrection in Jesus mighty name. Let every roaring of satanic lions against us be silenced and be terminated in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the activities of vagabond and evil broadcasters be terminated in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every satanic program against us be nullified in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every power hunting our secrets be confounded in the mighty name of Jesus. We paralyze every power of bewitchment fashioned against us in Jesus' the mighty name. Let 
any demon living inside any member of our household. Depart now. Depart now. In Jesus mighty name. Every spirit of pocket with holes be mended by the blood of Jesus. Let all evil rivers flowing down to us from any ancestral line dry up now. In Jesus mighty name. Let every power of unrepentant witchcraft be disgraced forever in Jesus mighty name. Let all satanic checkpoints hindering our prayers be bulldozed by divine fire in Jesus mighty name. Father Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you because our angels, Father Lord, cannot be intercepted. We thank you for divine intervention from heaven, Lord God. We thank you for divine intervention, Father Lord. We thank you for your hand of mercy upon us. We thank you for victory in Jesus' mighty name. We know that in the name of Jesus, according to your word, we cannot be put to shame. We cannot be confounded. We cannot be confounded as it is written in Romans. Romans 9.33, see our lays as in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble. All our enemies have stumbled and fell and been disgraced in the mighty name of Jesus. We have the victory. We cannot be put to shame in our health, in our finances, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our businesses, in everything that we do. We cannot be put to shame. We cannot be paralyzed. We cannot be put to shame in Jesus' mighty name. We are the walking miracle that everybody will testify of. We are more than conquerors in Jesus' mighty name. If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, that says the Lord, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We have the victory. We possess our victory. We possess our victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There is a person here that God is is saying that the reason why your family does not allow you to pray at home aggressively is because of the covenants they have. Your prayers are disturbing the altars that they have established to get wealth. And your prayers and you being on this live stream is a problem to your family. That's why they have told you to stop coming here. They have told you to stop praying. That you don't have to pray all those prayers. You don't have to do all that. You are fine the way you are. You are being a fanatic. Listen, sister, don't stop your prayers. Carry on. Pray, pray, pray. No family member can interfere with your relationship with Christ. No family member can tell you to stop praying. Okay? Continue to pray. Be encouraged because the message is encouraging anyway. This, this message today is encouraging us to do what? To continue to pray. To continue to fight. To continue to go forward in prayer and not give up and not faint. Okay? So don't give up on your prayers. Alright? Glory be to God. There is a person here. You have a problem. And the problem is that your insurance doesn't cover for um, dentist, And you need a procedure at your dentist that is quite expensive. And your insurance doesn't cover. But God is going to make it in a way that your dentist will see you with that insurance. A miracle will happen. Right, capital me. Receive your blessing. God is going to make a miracle that your dentist is going to accept that insurance the way it is and still give you the treatment. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus' mighty name. There is a person here that you receive a bill for taxes and is very high. And you are back and forth with them by via email to tell them that those um, figures are incorrect. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. You, you're going to receive an email from them to say to you that, yes, we made a mistake. God is fighting for you to give you the victory. Write capital me and come back and testify that sister Dalila, God has done it for me. Okay? And come back and testify. Come on now. 
receive it right capital me that's how capital me i know it's you've received it yes receive it beloved sister in jesus mighty name you will win that battle what you are contesting you are receiving favor from god and god is going to exempt you from that okay i see great exemption and it's gonna be via email because you are back and forth with them i can see you sending and receiving emails next email you're gonna get is for them saying to you they will say to you that it's for forget it disconsidered we've made a mistake and we apologize god is in charge take possession of your inheritance of your victory in the mighty name of jesus glory be to god thank you jesus thank you father Thank you, Abba, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus is healing so many of you women that have a high flux on your period. It's like really bad. God is repairing your womb, the walls of your womb. You will not bleed extraordinarily anymore. It's all going to be under control. Now, God is healing the wound, the, the, the walls of your womb. Receive healing by writing capital me. Receive your healing. Receive it, beloved sister. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to God. There is a person here. You are going through a divorce. And you are asking God for your spouse to let you keep the house because of the children. You are asking God to touch your spouse. Not to want to sell the property and then split it into half. You are asking God to receive your victory, Sister Yashna. Okay? God is going to touch his heart and he will say, just keep the house for you and the kids. It's okay. Okay? And pray for your marriage. Okay? Don't give up on your husband. Okay? Don't give up. Continue to pray for reconciliation. Okay? And come back and testify. God can reconcile. God can resurrect marriages. Okay? Don't give up. Okay, glory be to God. The Bible says you will not be put to shame because you have that rock that makes all people stumble and fall. You will not be put to shame. Okay, you have to have faith. Glory be to God. There is a person here on this live stream. Although you are a Christian, you are practicing meditation. You are meditating and you are having out of body experiences repent that is demonic if jesus was to come back and you were in that state of meditation having an out of body experience you will go to the pit of hell and burn there forever oh if you were to die okay because you know that the devil can take your spirit and disconnect from your body while you are meditating and having out of body experience and you will die where do you think you're gonna spend eternity that is not of God. Repent by writing capital me. It's never too late. It's never too late. Repent and write capital me. It's never too late. Write capital me and repent. Your life is at stake. You cannot continue to have out of body experience by the means of meditation. It goes against all principles of God. Write capital me. I'm asking the saints not to write yikes and all these different things. We are all sinners. We were not land, we did not land in the presence of God just like that. We were somewhere and we had to repent. So let's not deter other people from doing the same. Write capital me, beloved. You cannot continue to practice meditation and travel out of your body. Having out of body experiences is dangerous. The devil can cage your spirit and can kill you. And if you die, where will you spend eternity? Certainly not in the presence of God. Out of body experience by means of meditation, write capital me and repent. The Holy, the Holy Spirit convict you. Okay? You are doing meditation and you are doing this to have an out of body experience. To levy, to your spirit to leave your body and go and have experiences somewhere. You are doing this. I can see it. You wake up very early in the morning to do this. Repent. Write capital me. I'm not better than you. I had to repent before I came to Christ and leave the things of the devil behind to follow Christ. 
And God is extending to you mercy today. Just cooperate and repent. Come to Jesus. If you really want to see Jesus one day, you have to repent. You go to your bed and your, your spirit is leaving your body. And all. This is not of God. You have to repent and seek forgiveness from God and be set free. Ask God to set you free. Because a person that is astral projecting or leaving their body, they are being aided, supported by demons. Receive your freedom, sister, as you repent. Ask God to bind the demons that are allowing you to do this as well. So that you will be fully delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Saints, let us pray before you all leave. But before I have a good testimony, um, a sister contacted me that she's been on this live stream for a couple of weeks. And um, she said that she was arrested by the Holy Spirit. And repented of the sin of fornication and all these different filthy immoral acts. She says she's completely stopped, turned to God and is now living for God. And she is experiencing a peace that she has never experienced before. She says that the peace that she's experiencing now, she never thought it was possible. And she's set free from fornication, immorality and filth. And she says that she's happy for the, for the uh, preaching on this live stream because it was through the preaching that she repented and she saw that she was doing wrong. And she said that she's at peace. And she was sending a message to say thank you for the ministration and how she wants this message to uplift those who are struggling with immorality. That yes, it's possible for you to repent. Turn from your wicked ways and be in the presence of God. She says that now she has a passion for God. She's on fire for God. She wants to pray and be in the presence of God. And it's the Holy Spirit that has done it by convincing her of her sin. Okay? And another sister said that she's been asking God to give her visions to show her what is going on in her life and God has been revealing the witches in our in her environment all these wicked people and um, she can see them for who they are in the spirit that is God daughter of Zion I will contact you after the live stream I owe you a message and I will respond okay don't think I'm ignoring you I will respond to your message Saints of God, let us pray. And if you do have your testimony or you want to ask for prayer or anything, contact me, okay? Um, to advise you that today, saints, I won't be online in the evening. I need to rest. I need time to my own time with God, my own time in prayer and rest as well so that I can come fired up for the Lord, okay? Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence, for your Holy Spirit that surpasses our understanding. We thank you for all that you did, for all that you are doing and about to do, Lord. We thank you because, Father, Lord, although we have done so many wicked things through the course of our lives, yet you looked at us, Father, Lord, and gave us a chance. You look at our potential as believers. You did not look at what we were doing wrong, Lord. But rather you forgave us and you embraced us because of the blood of your son Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Almighty God, we thank you for another day. Another day that is a testament that you have not given up on us. That you are still extending mercy and grace and love. Father Lord, teach us to walk upright. Father Lord, give us the strength that we will not give up and relent on our prayers. Father Lord, ignite and resurrect our prayer altars with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Resurrect uh, our midnight hour prayers. Resurrect our 3 a.m. prayers. Father Lord, allow us to pray to break through, Lord God, and not give up. You said, Lord Jesus, man is to pray and not faint. Lord, give us the desire for prayer again. Father, Lord, resurrect our prayer altars. Give us the fire for intercession, the fire for worship and seeking your face and praying and speaking in tongues so that we will not give up but continue to be, Father, Lord, 
aggressive father lord in prayer and always constantly be in your presence to have the victory because there is no victory without prayer father lord in the mighty name of jesus i speak over your children life into their bones life into their their, their, their vital organs i speak life into their blood father lord i speak life into their destinies i decree and i declare as your servant almighty god that everybody that is on this live stream they are more than conquerors in jesus name that whatever they do will prosper that wherever they go father lord they will attain unmerited favor that father lord i speak over their lives a mantle of excellence in all that they do of prosperity success elevation promotion oh father lord open the floodgates of heaven and bless them lord god in such a manner that they will not have enough store room to contain it father lord i pray uplift your children lift them over and beyond all the limitations of life father lord your word says that we will not be put to shame i say of your children here on this live stream today you will not be put to shame in the mighty name of jesus you will not be put to shame and those who are seeking to destroy you seeking to oppress you seeking to kill you they will have to take their own very hands and terminate themselves in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen almighty god I pray that your hands will locate today, beloved sister Gail Ned, Lori Nobos Gray, Latosha Quenta Bam, Brenda Pizarro, Ravina Collins, AGC Wholesale, Geraldine Collins, Chantel Small, Selena Bradley, Tyron Harris, Jovianka Gregorius, Jalimar Diamond, ADR Galloway, Rakita Wola, parents Raymond Renova, family members Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee. Elaine Todd, Rose Beba, Lashondo Brown, Julie Jeffries and Scotty, Emily Jackson, Lorian Baker, Ruth Lua, Iro Sports LCC. Oh, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, give these prayer altars of these saints the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, let the fire of the Holy Ghost ignite the altars, Almighty God, so that they will be able, Father Lord, to pray more, to seek your face more. There for defeat all the powers of the enemy they are fighting the angel that is bringing the answer to their prayers in jesus mighty name visit also father lord beloved sister venice Epton, simon morgan our products antoinette lewis michelle wallace abimbola akano roxy and bell natasha fogel genoa be hair care asila preston three children tristan ryan Antoinette Fleming, Angelette Newman, Augusta Nashedo, Mama Hurley, Roberta Davis, Karen Adeli Moss, Cecil Sobers, Nathalie Bish, Naily Nedson, Father Lord, I'm asking you today, arise from heaven and resurrect the prayer altars of all these saints. Oh, Father Lord, I'm asking you, them, I'm asking you, ignite the prayer altars. Let the midnight prayer altars, Father Lord, receive the resurrection power in Jesus' mighty name. Let the 3 a.m. prayer altars receive resurrection power in Jesus' mighty name. The fire of the Holy Ghost, ignite this prayer altars. Fire of the Holy Ghost, oh, resurrection resurrect the prayer altars and the mantle of intersection oh lord god so that the angels will locate them with a blessing oh there will be no interceptions father lord to the prayers going up to the heavenlies in jesus mighty name father lord visit beloved chrisanda lewis chantel small jessica kincaid lakisha drama joanna victorino elizabeth s camilla mariam freddy tropic bay boutique Angie Newman, Felicia Anto, Laura Rodriguez, Owen Piri, Noel Lucian, Eric Campos, J.D. Siemens, Dennis Mitchell, Denise Mitchell, Tass Flumo, Tamisha Brown, Titi Toure, Lesinga Holcrom, Harold Richardson, Tarmisha Hayes, and daughter Shimori Chanel, Teresa Sullivan, Father Lord, I'm asking you arise for these saints as well and ignite their prayer altars, resurrect their prayer altars, the midnight and 3 a.m. prayer altars, receive fire from the Holy Ghost, receive fire, a fire, 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 so that these saints can continue to pray, can continue to be in the spirit of intercession. Father Lord, that they will not give up on the mantle of responsibility for prayer and intercession for their family. Father Lord, let everybody battle in the spirit be won in favor of these saints and let them receive the answer from the angel that has been put in charge to give them father lord a blessing in jesus mighty name oh father lord visit also brother andrew apostle from value stores 
Beloved sister Rachel Reed, Mrs. Martin, Selena Bradley, Erin Jones, parents Brenda George, Alice Jones, children Aaron Malachi, Julian Yoba, Emelda Bok, Toya Thorpe, Giovanni Holland, Jacqueline Bogle, Kazai Films, Pasca Beatty, Elizabeth Tadis, and Shane Furtado. Oh God Almighty, I'm asking you today, resurrect the prayer altars of these saints. Reignite, Father Lord, the midnight and 3 a.m. prayer altars. Father Lord, let the Holy Ghost fire ignite their altars so that they will not give up on their prayers they will not give up on their intercessions they will not give up on their relationship with you they will continue to go from strength to strength father lord until the angel has successfully delivered the answers to their prayers let every demonic and satanic prince of persia and prince of greece be destroyed father lord in the mighty name of jesus so that our prayers can receive a response from heaven in jesus mighty name we pray Amen, amen, and amen. Saints, may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord keep you. May he continue to shine his face upon you and be merciful unto you. May he continue to open the floodgates of heaven. And that from today, you will look at your spiritual battle differently. That the power of God and the anointing of the living God will always be with you. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Don't give up, saints. God is at work and fighting for us. Okay? You do your part and let him do his part. Okay, saints? Be encouraged. It shall forever be well with all of you in Jesus' mighty name.